Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abu Haas, and with me here today is Team 11260 Upper Creek Robotics. There are our previous Freight Frenzy World Champions, and I'm sure they're looking to repeat it again. Currently, they're ranked eighth in their division. I'm sure they'll be uh, right around there, hopefully even higher once qualification matches end later today. So, guys, let's just jump right into this robot. There's so much to talk about, and I'm so excited to cover it. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about, I think, is the elephant in the room. You know, we guys, we saw you guys in your first competition, and this robot just looked so similar to your robot from last year. And obviously, that was a very well-proven and tested design. So what inspired you guys to reuse that robot as opposed to trying something very, very different? Right, so yeah, last year we had a very successful robot. Um, it worked very well. And early on this year, we identified that a lot of the elements uh, last year, or we could easily modify uh, last year's robot to become very effective in this year's game. So after about the first week after reveal, we had a robot, we had thrown a claw on it, and we had a robot that we could start doing software development on. And a lot of our software is very advanced, and you'll definitely see that. Um, and everything on the base has been redesigned um, to fit the, this game the best that it can. However, a lot of the elements from last year's robot are present. Yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the software. As far as uh, path planning and path following goes in Autonomous and Teleop, I know you guys have a lot of software enhancements. Uh, walk me through those, how you guys use them, and how they've been working out for you guys. Uh, yeah, so as far as like path following and Autonomous, um, we like to use Pure Pursuit, uh, which is really nice. Um, it just, it's really nice because you get to look ahead a few points and then it, uh, because of that, even if you like get knocked off or anything like that, you stay on the path. Um, and last year we had the idea because the paths you're driving are so repeatable of um, using that same path following algorithm in teleop. And so once we came to that realization of like not everything has to be like manual and everything in teleop, this year we created our own program called grid driving um, that we essentially just like tracks your the robot's position on the field and then uses that to avoid like running into junctions and um like the ground junctions and those kinds of things which is really cool Do you wanna... yeah no that's that's perfect so talking a little bit about your turret now how has it changed from last year what upgrades have you made to it and do you uh you know do you like having the turret or if you could go back would you change it to a different design yeah, so the main uh, improvement is we went to a better um, and smaller bearing. Uh, we have a lot less slop, which we saw in the first few competitions. Um, so the bearing has changed, and overall I think we're very happy with how the turret has performed. We also um, changed the gearbox that drives the turret from a uh, custom bevel gear gearbox to a 90-degree rev gearbox, um, which has been interesting. We've seen um, some slop with that, so... Yeah, and as far as the software goes on here, have you guys added any sensors or new features, or was it just you know really set from last season? So yeah, this year we did a lot of work on new sensors, and the two big ones we focused on were vision and our beam brakes, and then the other one we've had all this time is our odometry wheels. We use two-wheel dead wheel odometry for our pathing. But for our beam brakes, we use one in our beam brace where this sensor right across here can basically detect a junction immediately and really helps hasten our deliveries when we're going. And right when the junction is there, we know it's ready for deposit. Yeah, but so as far as your turret control goes, are you guys just using the encoder to align that or do you have some sort of absolute position, positioning system? For the turret, we use just an absolute positioning system where we take uh, the encoder ticks and convert them to degrees, and then we'll just go to certain degrees as needed. Yeah, just to add on to that, um, one thing that we do use that I really like is we have this like tracking stuff that we do during like placements and um, like pickups in auto. Uh, we just because of the odometry wheels, we're able to like use arc tension, I guess, to align the turret to where the um, junction or cone stack should be rather than just like blindly going somewhere mm -hmm. yeah and so now moving on to the rest of your intake and depositing system let's start with the slides how have those changed are those completely new and how have they changed throughout the season as well not just from last 
last season. Yeah, so the slides, we're still using Mizumi linear slides. We've extended the length of them from, um, I believe they were 8 inches last year to um, 12 inches this year. Um, so overall, the slides are longer. The linkage to extend, or to extend the slide has remained uh, very similar uh, compared to last year. Um, and overall, they haven't gone through many design changes. They've been very successful so far. Yeah, and I think the thing that's probably gone through the most iterations this season is your entire claw mechanism. So walk me through that. Anything you guys tried early this season that didn't end up on the final robot, and then also how the final robot one works. Okay, so early in the year, we our first design was a rubber band um, intake. It just used a rubber band that we would pull out that would uh, go around the cone and... We used that for quite a while because it had a very large capture radius, um, which we thought would help us during Auton. However, there were a lot of issues with the stability of the um, rubber band. So then we uh, switched to a more traditional conventional claw design that you'll see many teams using. Um, we have polycarbonate on the sides to add extra uh, compliancy when forming around a cone, as well as foam on the inside for grip strength. Yeah, and so as far as sensors you guys have going on for your claw, I know you mentioned the beam brake on your junction liner. Is the junction liner something you had this entire season, or was it added later throughout after you saw that being adopted by other teams? We've had the junction liner pretty much all season. Um, it was one of the first major projects we worked on. It's gone through many different uh, design changes, especially in the breakaway system. Since it is um, so far and exposed on our robot, we put a lot of effort into making sure that it could be safely uh, broken and it would snap back into place in case something bad happened. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. And I think another thing that's really uh, unique about you guys this season especially is your cone uprighting mechanism. So if we can just flip the robot around and talk about that, it is so, so cool. And I think everybody really needs to see how it works. So can you please walk us through it? Yeah. So we have on the back of our robot is just a servo controlled bar that we can raise and lower. Um, and on the back is this arc thing. It has a very large capture radius. So we're able to write cones um, without having to be super precise. So we just lower it and then we can just drive back our robot. Here, right? Drive back the robot and it will write the cone and then we can just flip it up and it's ready to be intaked again. And due to the natural curvature of or the way that a cone will roll in an arc, it allows us to pick it up from pretty much any angle. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. And talking a little bit about the manufacturing behind this component, how did you make it? Is it just completely 3D printed or what is it made out of? It is uh, carbon fiber rods that has 3D printed. Um, all the angles are 3D printed to give it the arc shape. So then all of the rods are just straight. You didn't bend any of them and you just installed uh, small connecting pieces? Correct. Okay. Awesome, yeah. And so just from a general match strategy perspective, how do you guys approach a match deciding what to do and then how to deal with your partners, your opponent, opponents, and try to get that win? For match strategy, we at the start of the season, we were looking at the points and we decided that sprinting out and getting ownership was a really strong strategy, hence why we went for a small, fast base. So our main strategy is... Um, Play just slow, don't miss a cone, and just get a lot of ownership throughout the field. We generally stay away from circuits just from them being very quick to break. So for match strategy, we'll just try to go through all of our cones one by one and uh, place them all around and control as many junctions as possible. Yeah, awesome. Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think that's pretty spot on. Okay, cool. So... Up a Creek, thank you so much. This has been a fantastic interview. You guys always just build and program such amazing robots this year is definitely no exception. Reporting for First Updates now, I'm Abbas, and with me here today is Team 11260 Up a Creek Robotics. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.